Okay, action. <laughs> Hi, welcome back. So, today we'll talk about the principle of artifact orientation in requirements engineering. Sounds very philosophical, sounds very abstract, is not that bad. In general, there are two paradigms in requirements engineering that we can follow. One is an activity-oriented paradigm and the other one is an artifact-oriented paradigm. The main difference between the two is that with an activity-oriented paradigm, I will follow a set of guidelines in a more or less sequential order and I will do the tasks that the guideline tells me to do. This is how many companies operate in their process descriptions. So they will have a manual for this is how we do requirements engineering in this company. First of all, I gotta say, it's a good thing if they have such a guideline, if they don't just wing it. So kudos for taking that big first step. Now, research over the past 15 years has shown that it is often more beneficial to go with an artifact-oriented paradigm. And what that means is I try to focus on the work results as opposed to on the activities that will get us there. So to give you a simple example, I can have, say, three parts in my, or three tasks in my list for activity orientation. Oops. Typo on the glass, not good, smears all over the place. Okay, activity orientation. This one would say, develop list of stakeholders. Illicit goals. and draft use cases. And we'll talk about these items in more detail later on. So for now, we just know stakeholders are the people who are concerned with what we have to do in this project. What they have is goals, so they have goals for that system. And the use cases are how we describe the interaction between that future system that we're building and the user. Now our, our, our activity orientation, tongue twister, says we're just gonna do those three steps and we're good. The challenge is we don't know what the end result's gonna look like. It sometimes reminds me a little bit of giving class assignments. Like I could give you a description of, please develop a list of stakeholders for me. And you will probably ask back, well, what do you want that list to look like? So it's the same thing that practitioners ask back when they would get such a guideline in practice. So artifact orientation takes this and says, we're gonna need a stakeholder model which means we're gonna have a UML hierarchy of actors And this person obviously is the boss of that person and that person, at least they're higher in the pecking hierarchy. And that person has a team working with them and they all have their hands up because they're so happy. No, that's the UML standard. I don't know who came up with that. And this one is the rebel, he has the hands down. So this is the hierarchy. And then we'll have a stakeholder matrix that says for every stakeholder what characteristics they have. So what is their main need? What is their priority? So how important are they? And how to communicate with them? Are they 
right in the next office? Are they on a different continent? So that's what our artifact for the stakeholder model would look like. Now, if I, didn't, if I did not give you any instructions on how to fill this out, and if you did not get any more information on how to develop a list of stakeholders, which one do you think may provide you with a better guidance on this is what your boss wants to see at the end of the day? A lot of companies think this one. And so we do the same thing for the goal model. And the goal model will have some business goals that get decomposed in some usage goals that get decomposed in some system goals. And I'm going to explain all these terms in future modules, so don't worry about the individual terms right now. I just want to point out to you that when we emphasize the work results, over the process of how to get there, we are more likely to be able to assign different responsibilities to different people and then plug those modules together into one consistent requirement specification. For the use cases, we're going to need those here as input. So they're going to be developed third in a use case model. And for a use case model, we have a little use case overview diagram, which we're also going to talk about in more detail in the future. And in each of those scenarios, gets described in a textual template. Now, what I want you to take away from this is not so much the term of artifact orientation and you carrying that into your future company saying, oh, you're still working activity oriented, we need to shift to artifact orientation. No, not necessarily. What I do want to point out to you and what I think is the important point for you to take away is that when you come into a company and you see a process guideline that gives you a very detailed description of the steps that you're supposed to take, but that does not define what the work results are supposed to look like, then you want to point that out and you want to make sure that you sit down together and you develop a template of what these work results are supposed to look like. And yes, depending on different types of systems, they may look slightly different, but you can develop a baseline template and then adapt it as needed for your specific project.